be the 1st of September tomorrow and our tomatoes have succumbed to blight. They're really not looking great. These are heritage varieties that we've been trialling this year and uh, even though they are early varieties, for us they are really mid-season because we have such a short season here and we're northwest facing slope. We had a couple that performed really well and gave a, a heavy crop. Um, one was Ace 55 and the other was Aurora, so we'll definitely be growing those next year. Um, you can see here that the fruit's just covered in blight. Um, you know, really not doing well at all. So definitely wouldn't want to eat these, which is a real shame then you look at this one here which is from our breeding trials that we've been doing ourselves and there's a tiny bit of blight on some of the older foliage but you can see the younger leaves are still flowering looking really healthy and just completely different to these other varieties this one here is one of the um, fruit off one of the plants in here there's eight plants in this 50 litre pot so we grow them all together so we can fit as many plants in as we can to maximize the amount of plants that we can grow out in our trial and you can see that this is um, the second year so these are the f2s and you can see there's quite a variation these are sort of a large uh, smallish salad these are even smaller um, some slightly bigger ones and then right up to this beef one here so this is all from the same batch of seed from a cross that we did um, uh, last year a uh, year before so this one will be growing again um, the disease resistance has been excellent and we have already managed to harvest quite a few of the fruits this size but um, it's starting to get quite cold here now September starts tomorrow so we're going to try and grow this one in our greenhouse next year. So I thought I'd give a bit of an explanation about how we came to uh, have to breed this fruit, about some of the, the processes that we did to get a disease resistant plant. We had grown Paul Robeson in our polytunnel. We really liked it um, as a plant and we liked the flavour. So we wanted to try and grow it outdoors. Um, but it didn't really have the disease resistance that we needed here to be able to grow it outdoors because of blight. So um, we took Paul Robeson and uh, another plant which we knew had two copies of three different um, genes for blight resistance. Um, so it's homozygous for these three genes for, for blight resistance. And that meant that we knew whatever that we grew from that first cross would have at least one gene for blight resistance. So the first year we crossed these two plants and then we took the fruit um, from that cross and we sowed the seed and grew some plants on the following year um, as the first part of our trial. So that was the F1 year. Um, from those plants, it was really noticeable that there was one plant in particular which looked um, much healthier uh, when all the other plants, just as here, had been um, destroyed by blight. There was one plant which was still looking really healthy and had some really nice big fruit on it which tasted really nice. And taste is really important because if it didn't taste nice, there wouldn't be any point in carrying on um, trying to grow it. So we then saved some seed so from a fruit from that trial from the one plant that looked really healthy and we grew that on again so that was this year with our f2 and in here we've got eight plants which are all from the same fruit off that one plant that we selected last year that had looked quite healthy with these nice big fruits um, and when you're doing your f2 um, generation you're not really sure then exactly what characteristics you're going to get in terms of disease resistance um, because the, the parents didn't have these two sets of genes anymore. When you did the cross, um, you're not really sure what you're going to get, but, but actually the, all eight plants have really similar disease resistance, so they're still all looking really good, but you can see that there's quite a variety in fruit sizes. 
Um, so once again, we chose uh, one of the plants in here has, has produced quite a nice crop of these large fruits. Even though there's eight plants in this pot, you know, it's still grown quite well and produced quite a bit of fruit. So we've chosen this tomato from that fruit. So this is the, um, from the F2. And then this will be the fruit of which we'll save a seed and next year we'll grow our F3 generation and we'll see what happens. And, um, you know, we'll keep doing that until at some point the variety hopefully will stabilize and we'll get disease resistant plants um, but with reliably large fruits like this uh, rather than this real um, variability here so we'll uh, we'll hopefully see what happens next year